But again, no out-of-pocket costs for office visits, uh, lab tests, uh, DME, and even behavior modification counseling. Uh, so uh, need to see an LCSW, need to see a psychologist, need to see um, anyone with regard to the help, help with managing that condition, which can be a startling revelation for people who are first diagnosed um, or um, just how to deal with it in terms of one's daily life and um, make, make the chronic condition um, not uh, uh, oh, so overwhelming, uh, but be able to live with that. And so with uh, regard to diabetes, for instance, uh, this means up to 100 uh, glucometer test strips are covered, uh, no out-of-pocket cost for each 90 days. Uh, so over the course of the year, that amounts to uh, roughly 400 test strips that would be available. Um, we can accommodate greater numbers uh, with um, uh, prior approval. For uh, diabetic eye exams, uh, critical to being able to diagnose uh, retinopathy, uh, so common uh, in the case of diabetes. Um, you know, those ophthalmologist visits, optometry visits are um, available with no out-of-pocket costs. Uh, same with um, uh, education programs such as diabetes self-management education, oftentimes referred to as uh, ambulatory diabetes um, education, ADEF. Um, the, uh, those programs that are often based uh, in hospitals like this one, um, because of the resource um, demands of that program, which is a great program and, and endorsed by the American Diabetes Association, um, they're, they've been proven very effective. They take about, uh, I think it's about 10 to 12 hours total uh, from, from intake to uh, the coursework and the, and the um, plan. Um, again, this is, would be covered entirely um, by uh, Maine Community Health Options. And then nutritional counseling uh, as well uh, is something that we uh, provide uh, full coverage of. I should mention, too, that we're very proud to, to support and to have nutritional counseling without any kind of referral from a, from a clinician. So anyone, with, without regard to uh, uh, whether they have one of these chronic conditions or not, can, can access nutritional counseling um, uh, at a small uh, copay. Uh, for those with these conditions, there is no out-of-pocket cost. So what does this mean in terms of uh, total expense? Uh, well, within the summary of benefits coverage that you'll find on our website, there's a lot of information. I encourage you to go uh, to mainoptions.org. Um, you'll, you'll see within the summary of benefits coverage a couple of uh, charts that are required by federal uh, regulation. And one is to um, uh, detail the expected costs under any given plan for either a normal delivery of a baby um, and all the costs related to that as well as um, managing type 2 diabetes. So you see at the top um, that the amount, uh, the total costs uh, paid to providers uh, is about $7,540 uh, expected with um, a normal delivery. Uh, in this particular uh, plan um, type, which is uh, Community Choice, one of our uh, silver level plans. It, um, uh, the plan pays uh, just over you know, $4,400 and the patient would be expected to pay about $3,100. And it breaks down in terms of the deductible, which is a $2,000 deductible, and then the coinsurance. Um, and this is assuming that there aren't any other costs uh, incurred that already takes the member above the true out-of-pocket costs. And I'll just take a step away from the slide to say uh, one of the tremendous benefits of the Affordable Care Act is that there is truly a cap in terms of total out-of-pocket costs that uh, someone would be expected to pay. And that is um, a maximum this year of 6, 000, 2014 of $6,350. So, Barring other expenses, in this instance, uh, the um, patient payment would total um, $3,100. Now, when looking at uh, diabetes, 
the sample care costs are just over $4,000, but with our chronic illness support program, the out-of-pocket costs for maintenance of that condition throughout the year be uh, just over 200. So that demonstrates the power of our value-based insurance design in helping people stay on the right side of their disease. Another distinction for Mink Meal Health Options is that we're not um, invoking the rating ban on tobacco use. Uh, so there are three areas, uh, three uh, rating factors that we can uh, use um, uh, under the Affordable Care Act. And one is uh, geography, another is age, and the other is uh, tobacco use. Uh, there used to be um, rating on gender as well. Uh, in some cases there was rating on occupation and, and so forth. Now, uh, with the community rating of the Affordable Care Act, um, it's just those three. We tossed out tobacco use <coughs> because we didn't want to have one rate for uh, tobacco users and one rate for non-tobacco users. Now, at first, one might think, well, sure, people that um, smoke, it's known that uh, smoking uh, has uh, ill effects on health and can induce uh, greater utilization. Um, so one might think, well, there should be a higher premium. Well, we don't want to bar people from the very treatment that we think is necessary to help people quit if um, they have made that decision uh, to, to quit. And so instead of charging a different uh, premium, what we've done is uh, put our money where our mouth is in providing uh, for unparalleled uh, treatment options uh, for people um, that uh, choose Mink Me Health options. So we support unlimited quit attempts. We have um, unlimited nicotine replacement therapy uh, because we know that it takes people oftentimes, I mean, there are some instances uh, and some great success stories of people being able to quit uh, essentially cold turkey in one try. Uh, but I've heard of many other people that it's taken many times, many efforts, and um, there's a lot to it because nicotine is such a, um, uh, an addictive substance. So we want to be there for our members and provide the treatment um, options that they uh, really need in order to uh, get to a better state of health. And if we did charge a different premium, we also didn't want to uh, essentially catch people up in a lie if they say, well, I'm about to quit. So I'll, I'll, I'll say that I'm, I'm not a smoker anymore. But then what would happen, right? If they, if they fell off the wagon and, and then later in the year they wanted to go back to trying to quit, well, if they already declare themselves a non-smoker, they might be less apt to take advantage of, of the benefit. So we really try to look at the unintended consequences of, of that uh, uh, difference. I already talked about most of this. Uh, I would just also mention that we have Chantix available for a 90-day supply in any plan year um, as another part of our uh, nicotine uh, tobacco cessation. So there are different, uh, under the ACA, there are different metal level plan designs. Uh, we have plans in uh, one in the gold, uh, three silver, and a couple of bronze. Um, and you'll, we'll go through these, and you have a, a handout that talks about some of the details. If you want to get into uh, all of the details, again, our website does a great job um, providing that. Um, the, the metal levels are meant to um, convey richness of, of benefits. So the bronze level is a lower premium, but there are higher out-of-pocket costs associated uh, throughout the year. So um, if one is utilizing healthcare services more, one would pay you know, the lower premium but have more out-of-pocket expenses, but, you know, both deductible, uh, co-insurance, and co-pays. Um, I should mention that in every instance, we tried to move as much as we could uh, to co-pays so that there's greater transparency and, and um, ability to budget for uh, utilization. The more we move into richer plans, the easier that is, just on an actual, on, on, on in our um, estimate of, of utilization. Silver level, we have three different plans. 
Um, I should mention the, the bronze plans we have, you'll see one that has, it's an HSA compatible plan. And one is the, has the chronic illness support program. Unfortunately, we can't pair the chronic illness support program that I was just going through and an HSA in the same um, vehicle. They have to be uh, separate. So HSA doesn't allow for the value-based insurance design. But that, so that's why we have two of those. And then uh, three different silver level plans, trying to find the, the right balance, uh, different balances for people in terms of uh, that co-insurance and co-pay uh, and deductible level all have the uh, value-based insurance design. And, and the gold uh, plan has the uh, lowest deductible and the uh, lowest amount of out-of-pocket uh, expenses. Uh, one other thing to point out, and we'll get into this with the, uh, in terms of the subsidy. Um, while the bronze level premium is most attractive in terms of being the lowest, in order to take advantage of any cost share reductions, which are available to people um, at income levels below 250% of the poverty level, the silver level plan offers the best um, cost share reductions. So looking at one's utilization, while the premiums may be lower here, this may be the better deal uh, when you look at those um, out-of-pocket expenses through the year. So I, I introduced the, the subsidy or the premium tax credit, the advanced premium tax credit. It's called advanced because um, we can use that on day one. Someone signs up for coverage for 2014 before December 15th. Then on January, uh, that first premium payment is already advantaged by the tax credit. You don't have to wait until uh, 2015 to settle up with the IRS on that, on that tax credit. There is a, there is a settling uh, in 2015 because this is based on uh, an estimate of 2014 household income. And if 2014 household income is different than your estimate, one way or another, then there's going to be a settling um, in terms of that uh, income tax return. Um, important to point out, though, <coughs> that this household income estimate can be changed throughout the year. So you don't have to take all of the credit, or if you are taking all the credit and things change for you, uh, hopefully for the better, you can adjust your household income and take less of a credit as you go through the year. So it's not as if it's set in stone. Um, one can make those uh, modifications. Um, it's also based on, um, uh, just a bit into the weeds here, but it's based on the benchmark plan. Um, and the benchmark plan it was essentially established um, by the, by the Affordable Care Act. It's a, it's a rich uh, plan, and um, uh, so we're pleased in terms of the, the benefits that um, then uh, are you know, accompanying uh, all of these offerings on the, on the exchange. Um, so we'll, I'll give you a schedule here of what the subsidy levels look like between 100% and 400%. This comes out a little bit um, uh, poorly on this slide, but at the lowest level of income where subsidies are available, and, and it only goes down to 100%, um, there's no subsidy available under 100% uh, because the ACA had anticipated that there would be a Medicaid expansion all the way up actually to 133%. So um, we can, that's a, another discussion we can have, but um, I just wanted to point out that subsidies go down 100% and the contribution that a person would make essentially of one's income is 2% at that level. And then it goes up to 9.5%. So you may have heard about the affordability metric of 9.5% and that's, um, that really tops out here. And so anyone that doesn't have access to coverage which is less than 9.5% of their household income can come to the marketplace even if they have um, affordable coverage, I mean, even if they have coverage offered to them by their employer and access plans on the exchange. 